So we had a gander at some of the early reviews from some of the access media outlets, and they weren't exactly all that flattering, but they pale in comparison to the audience scores, especially on Rotten Tomatoes and the likes, and yeah, some people are saying it's bad, others are saying even worse than expected, but the long and short of it is, not even the shells are out in enough force to really care about this stuff. But again, like I'm, if you're expecting a review on the show or anything like that, I ain't got time for that, okay? That's like two hours of my life I'm never going to get back, okay? Again, if, if I wanted to set aside a two-hour block, I'd go back and I'd watch The Two Towers again, okay? That's probably my favorite out of the tri the original trilogy, but I think, okay? And, here, and here's the theory I'm going to posit, okay? Because in real time, as this first season goes along, and nobody gives a shit about it in the long term, okay? This is going to change the streaming industry. If you've been watching my channel for a while, something that I've been talking about is also the fact that we're right on the cusp, on the precipice of the streaming bubble bursting. There have been stories, things that have been written specifically about this show and the fate of Amazon Prime Video. Okay, if this thing flounders, it's going to end up tanking the studio. Okay, well, again, Amazon, the company, has deep pockets. It's the first trillion dollar company. Yes, that is trillion with a T. So they can stomach even a billion dollar blow but there are other companies other streaming services that are out there that can't afford even a fraction of that okay you see how netflix is trying to correct course because they are hemorrhaging subscribers disney plus is practically stagnated all for what well, adhering to the ideology that got them to this point. Case in point, what we're seeing right now, especially with this, because I've been listening to some of the reviews that are out there, and they are numerous, and they are fantastic, but a whole bunch of very well-sourced reviewers who know the source material way better than I do. All I can do, I can take a look at trends. I can take a look at recent history and then just see where this trail eventually ends up. So first and foremost, let's take a look at what the fans are saying because we've seen, and just as a refresher, okay, what were the positive reviews from the shills, from the from the corporate press, to the people who actually enjoyed it, I guess, maybe they were watching it on mute because I'm hearing a lot of the dialogue is pretty bad, okay? But they were saying, right, especially that Guardian review that we took a look at, Oh man, the, the cinematics of the sweeping landscapes, they're beautiful. Yeah, that's great. Nature is wonderful. Nature is fantastic, okay? If I go to the south, I can be in the Rocky Mountains. If I go to the north, all I'm going to see is just plains for as far as the eye can see. I agree, nature is beautiful. But neither of those situations, going to the south, going to the north, east, or west, it doesn't matter if I go over hills, mountains, flats, or rivers... It doesn't make for a good story. That's what's kind of lacking here, okay? You have this unlikable female character. That's what I've been hearing, okay? Like I said, this isn't a review of the show or anything like that. She is just incredibly bitchy, incredibly unlikable, adversarial to everybody. And again, this was the big revelation that I eventually came to once I started to realize it's like, why don't I like media all that much? And oh boy, it's... Uh, a bit sure is hot, but oh, she has the personality of a wet bag. Not being able to perfectly nail down the points of disconnect that are out there. And we're kind of seeing this right now because we have Galadriel, right? Uh, she was Kate Blanchett. Uh, Kate Blanchett played her role in the original trilogy, the Lord of the Rings original trilogy, obviously. And now she's this no-named thunder cunt swinging a sword. It's like, okay, cool. She was an ethereal being of extreme amounts of wisdom and knowledge in those three films and now she's just basically trying to take on the aragon role of going out there is the fucking guns blazing or i guess you know, swords blazing like the fuck where where are we at that's where the disconnect is okay you see i'm not gonna say she's ugly or anything like that okay you see an attractive woman put on a bunch of armor that may or may not have been her brother who got killed it's like it's none of it's really all that appealing when you break it down and especially if you have such an abrasive personality facing off against that yeah you're already going an upwards hill and we also know people who consume okay consume a bunch of the media that's out there right now or at least has been okay in popular zeitgeist like i can point back to probably uh, the late 2000s okay where you could really start to see this hatred visceral disgust with any sort of competence that's coming from a masculine frame and now 
all we're seeing is that women are perfect, women are wonderful, their character arcs are as flat as Brie Larson's ass. They start great, they end great. Period. Wonderful, fantastic, roll credits. Nobody's interested in that type of stuff. People like to watch this type of stuff, especially in the fantasy genre, to escape from the banalities of regular life that continue to force down the message. And that's what people are getting right here, right now. Not saying that some of these reviews that are going to be coming out aren't intentionally bad faith. Not saying that they aren't getting review bombed in some form or fashion. It's just reflective of people who appreciate the most venerated fantasy property of all time. I don't think I'm being a little bit more hyperbolic than necessary. It's like the Lord of the Rings and then everything else. If George R. R. Martin's fat ass could put on a fucking taxi driver hat and then just sit down and write a book, he might be able to finish that series and you know what, hey, it might be up there, but again, you're gonna end up falling short or and having a massive heart attack before you end up finishing any of your fucking books. It's been 10 plus fucking years since you've released a book, you stupid old bastard, okay? We understand that you have a bunch of other projects that are out there and that you just like the easier work and the name recognition that comes off the back of the fame that is also associated with attaching yourself to a video game franchise that is wildly popular and also consulting on easy work when it comes to television shows okay that's probably much more appealing for you at 70 plus years old instead of going to your cabin and writing a book okay but you're never ever ever gonna catch up to J.R.R. Tolkien okay you're gonna be his bitch for eternity and that will be your legacy and the reason that there is such a venerated legacy for J.R.R. Tolkien and his Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, and his ethos and legacy is because it's so thought out. It's because the source material is so well respected. That's why people are coming out in such strong force because people know this stuff. People study this stuff. It's not, it doesn't have a shade on Star Wars. Okay, the sharp... In comparison, right? Like, the people enjoy the movies and the extended universe and all that stuff. Know that kind of stuff. But are there actual college courses to learn the works of Tolkien? Yeah, I don't fucking think so, okay? You're fucking with the wrong group of people here by trying to denigrate them by saying that, well, this is just review bombing. Because that's what's happening right now. And I could see this coming from a mile away. But again, I didn't expect two different gaslighting campaigns to be going on right now on the exact same day but hey man we're here so i'll just cover both of them at the same time furious lord of the rings fans are shouting what the elrond today <laughs> did you catch that pun there in the uh in the headline as well i didn't want to read it because it's the very first word is actually how i would properly describe the entire hand headline cringeworthy ring or rangs of power no no hard r's here okay has angry lord of the rings fans wanting to commit bloody mortar Oof, jesus that's terrible oh there she is the cheeto queen prime videos new lord of the rings prequel tv series lord of the rings the rings of power just rolls right off the tongue uh debuted its first two episodes tuesday night oh thursday night sorry and hardcore hardcore tolkien buffs uh, i don't think that they're all hardcore i think there's a bunch of people that uh liked a lot okay the lord of the rings films the the original three okay continue to say that so you define the terms of conversation here people really enjoyed those they were nominated for Academy Awards, justifiably so, and they're some of the most well-respected films of all time, okay? And then other people might or might not have watched the Hobbit series, and then because the series has been talked about for fucking ever, now that it's out, I wouldn't even say that it's such Tolkien buffs who are just taking this and seeing it for the negativity that it is, that are voicing their displeasure. That's a little bit of a disingenuous char er, characterization, at least in my opinion. Are doing a happy jig down at the Prancing Pony. See, I get that reference. That's where the, that's where the hobbits met with Aragorn uh, during the first movie. I get that one. The Rings of Power, a $715 million gamble. That's closer to about a billion. Uh, some reports say it cost... And there it is, a billion for Amazon's Prime's a streaming service has scored a measly 37% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes with more than 2,800 user reviews so far. That's important, okay? 37%. It's actually gotten worse than that because we can just go ahead and take a look. But notice the 2,800 user reviews. Okay, so it's a drop 3%. 3%. And there is 4,000 more user reviews. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark, or if I could, if I knew an area of Middle Earth specifically. I, I know things, I just don't know the lore as well as everybody else, so. 
On the flip side, HBO's House of the Dragon has an 85% fan score. Yeah, I've heard middling things about that. I've never watched Game of Thrones. I'm, I'm not into incest, so not my not my cup of tea. But even people who suffer through the end of that shit have given House of the Dragon a decent shake on this type of stuff. And yeah, they're saying that it's it's fine so far. So no, people, you know, people who are reporting and saying and reviewing this type of shit, okay, aren't just negative all the fucking time. They will praise the stuff that is good. They will tear down the stuff that is negative. And those are just the people that I watch. So there could be people who just fucking hate click and rage bait for the sake of it. Otherwise, if something's good, it's going to be praised. And if it's bad, it's going to be laughed at and mocked into oblivion. Nothing short of cringeworthy, wrote Eric S. Oh my god, of the show that stars Moidred Clark? Or Moifred Clark? I don't know. That girl as Galadriel. And Robert Amaro as Elrond. Okay. The writing is worse than what you'd expect to see on CW. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's, uh, that's sad. Yeah. Hallways and feelings. Yeah. It truly seems to have been written by a barely graduated high schooler that managed a C- average in creative writing. It's a smoldering dumpster fire. Eric S. has a very good grasp on the English language, unlike the other reviewers, professional reviewers, by the way, that were, We like the pretty pictures! This person's actually taken personal shots saying that the writing is fucking dog shit. And again, I'm not watching it. I have access to it. Still ain't gonna fucking watch it. But I'll take his word on this situation. Visually, it was good, but man, the story is slow-paced and dull. Another critique that I've heard as well. So again, it's being corroborated here by the by the very effusive Matt L. Sadie S. was also unimpressed as Gollum being gifted a ring uh, from Kay's Jewelers. Ow. This was completely awful. Very artificial looking with no heart. What a disgrace, she said. That sounds like more of an ad hominem attack, but hey, you know what? See, it looks like everybody, at least if we're going off of these three reviews, very vast swath of individuals, we could go into the Rotten Tomato score, but I think you're probably going to know what's going on there anyways, and uh, they're probably also not long for this world. But do these people come across as being Tolkien buffs? Saying that it looks pretty in certain, certain, uh, certain circumstances, but then also the acting and the writing is very jilted and terrible? Yeah, that doesn't really seem like, well, Actually, uh, Dr. Professor Tolkien but really bet on the third page. It, nobody's making those fucking references. So again, mischaracterizations. Oh, plenty. Critics have been warmer to the big budget fantasy series. Yes, because they don't want to lose access, okay? Because a lot of those motherfuckers got early access to this stuff. They got flued out to go see this shit, okay? And again, pressing up against that ain't fucking good for their bottom line. So again, whenever there's a big budget film that's going to be out there, big budget television series, okay? Something that people are told, hey, you better like this. You've seen this with every fucking Marvel film that's out there, okay? Even the audience that goes and sees it in the first couple of days, just they're like, yay, I like action films and then they forget everything about it in the next couple of weeks case in point at least this is going to be around for a little bit longer another seven weeks or something like that because two episodes came out right now and then it's only eight episodes long and then see in a couple years time okay but yeah, by the time that this is all said and done, I don't know how high of an opinion this is going to get. Maybe it gets really good in the next, what would that be, six episodes? Highly fucking unlikely because, again, the seeds of inadequacy have already been sown, okay? The writing is terrible. The fucking acting is wooden. But at least it looks kind of nice. Yeah, great, wonderful, fantastic. I'll fucking stare at a coffee table book if I want to see pretty pictures. But here's, but here is where we start to get... A little bit of foot okay and this is what the people this is what the detractors are going to be saying guess what well, it's all getting review bond uh, it's just those far right incels that are out there that just hate because there's a strong independent trademark woman who is at the center of the show and they hate it and guess what you're not our target audience because J.R.R. Tolkien clearly doesn't like you okay we have the rights to the source material ergo we know what we should be doing so we need to silence those racist incels that are out there and it's happening it's happening and this is why i think okay no source on this or anything like that okay i can't corroborate any of this stuff but i've also seen this shit go on before okay lord of ring uh lord of the rings uh whatever the rings of power shit amazon suspends user reviews for rings of power huh 
Interesting. Now, why would they be doing that? Because I've seen this happen before. Okay, it, it it happened on a different platform. Okay, it happened on Netflix for Amy Schumer, right? Like that cow came out dressed in. Would that be some sort of like soft cannibalism if that heifer was wearing leather at the same time? As she put out this atrocious comedy special in 2017, nobody liked it. Okay, like it was just a. It was an hour and a half of pussy jokes and my asshole stinks after I eat a whole bunch of Taco Bell. And a bunch of other Patrice O'Neill recycled jokes that you hoped everybody else had forgot about at that point. Fucking thief. But they got rid of audience interactivity off the back of that because it was getting reviewed bombed. Or people who watched it and decided to give it a one star or zero star rating, whatever the hell it ended up working out to. They just decided, no, 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 don't worry about that. We don't need your input anymore. We've also seen it played out right here on this platform. Uh, unless you're watching on Rumble where they're actually fine and you can do that whole rumble gimmick or you can go up or down and it affects things it just doesn't show specifically how many ups or downs are on there but talking about youtube in particular okay earlier this year it was they removed the dislike counter because well you know white house okay mainstream press okay and mainstream media outlets okay take a look at some of the reviews and then if you have an extension to show down votes especially for the trailers for rings of power you're going to notice a big old fucking trend of some hardcore ratio going on right now okay and those are just people that are consistently hate filled and they're getting sent over by the evil right wingers so because this property is as, is as popular as as big as it is okay like this again i can't stress enough this is lord of the rings okay even before the films came out i remember hearing about the books and how important they were to so many people okay they had preferential treatment in my public school library i had kind of an eclectic friend during grade school who was all about high fantasy and much more advanced concepts and he was all about that type of stuff and then he compound that with the biggest company on earth also backing this stuff as well i can see i can see user reviews on big stream out or mainstream outlets okay imdb Rotten Tomatoes, okay, because again, this is the last straw. This is the final time we're doing this because again, I don't know if like this is going to change or anything like that or if we're going to see it in real time. No, no, no. Everything's exactly the same, which is just a little bit fucking weird, don't you think? Like the, the film's been, or I'm sorry, the, tele, the first two episodes of the television show have been streaming since locally for me and I guess on the East Coast, that would have been nine o'clock last night and yet only 6,800 people are out there and this is supposed to be like a big review bomb bombing campaign okay and again this is going to change the industry one way or another i think it's going to result in the streaming services vastly changing their model going forward and then user input we don't need your input anymore okay that's not i think this will probably wait until the end of this series run okay and if the viewing numbers okay if they need to spin on that one i'll look at all of that negative press especially from very very prolific right-wing individuals they, they just they salted the earth out there it's a good show it's a very good show it's very high budget okay you need to go out there and you need to watch it but uh they were just turned off by all of these high profile influencers that are online and we just need to get rid of the user scores that are out there i can see that also going on okay they already got rid of it on the streaming service itself netflix has done it in the past okay Rotten Tomatoes, I've seen some people also say, and this one goes back way to 2018, 2019, okay? That time when they were just actively getting rid of negative, negative reviews for Captain Marvel because you're attacking a woman. But now, oh no, no, they got a plethora of different boxes checked for this show, okay? You got your Harfoots of color, your elves of color, your strong independent female protagonist. Oh no, no, you got all the incels going out there and attacking that. No, 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 it's enough. Uh, free speech is, uh, it's not for p private platforms. Uh, private companies can do whatever they want. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We know what the fuck is actually going on behind the scenes between government and big tech. But regardless, I think this is how this all shakes out. But just a little bit on this first and foremost. 
As has happened with other recent streaming releases, Amazon Prime Video's latest series, The Lord of the Rings, uh, Rings of Power, has found itself as the target of review bombing by some unhappy campers. The Hollywood Reporter brings word that Amazon is fighting this by suspending user reviews. Ah, yes, exactly. We put out a shit product. We know it's shit, but you guys are telling us it's shit. Then fuck you. You're wrong. What? Uh, the series on Amazon's landing page. I can't even fire up like the Amazon, see, you know, like the, the app for Android. I could just go to press that and they immediately give me a splash page for this fucking garbage show. You can't escape it right now. And I have like ads turned off of fucking everything. Anyways, preventing everyone or anyone from leaving a rating on it at all. As of this writing, the series has an 84% critical rating on Rotten Tomatoes. We'll just go ahead and check that one more time. Yep, 84%. And they have 38%. Yeah, no, and it's dropped four more percentile. So congratulations on that. Uh, uh, featuring uh, such choice reviews from trolls like an affront to true fans. A person responsible for this disaster should be arrested okay cool so it doesn't respect the source material and the person who does this shouldn't have a job anymore seems like a pretty standard bit of criticism right there uh, the heaven forbid okay do, do you guys actually have like a comment section on this stuff oh no nobody cares enough to comment mm, that sucks in the past amazon prime has leaned into negative review bombing by certain sects of fandom but now you decide because you have all of your money, you've pushed all your chips in on this one. You wanted to check all of the, the diversity boxes. You wanted to make the right people happy when it comes to putting out this show. And now all of a sudden you're just not going to lean into it anymore. Even marketing uh, multiple seasons of the boys ugh, around the audiences that left one star reviews for the hit TV series. That's great. That's great. And also I've heard reviews of that one. The first season was good. They're filming its fourth season. With Rings of Power, though, the series marks a giant investment by Amazon, the likes of which the likes of which we haven't committed since entering the streaming game. Now, it's the most expensive television show of all time, especially, especially if you break it down per episode. Like, I'm sure Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones proper is probably more, expect or more expensive per episode. And uh, I'm, I think it's House of the Dragon is, has about half the budget and everything looks better. Again, not my first-hand information. That's just people that I've seen review this type of stuff. So what's the problem here? It was previously reported that it just obtained the rights to the Lord of the Rings, that Amazon spent a quarter of a billion dollars, which coupled with production costs in the midst of the pandemic and marketing uh, the TV series in the modern era, puts spending on the series in the hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, all before one episode e or has even premiered. Yeah, and in order for this to be a success, it has to go for five seasons. They've already kind of soft committed to this, but I don't know how much this incredibly negative, or even from the critics, tepid reaction. I don't know how much of that throws a monkey wrench into this stuff. But again, just give it enough time, okay? Because this is like hot, hot, hot topic. Because again, just happened last night. We'll give it enough time to see if everything cools down over the weekend, okay? Or if one of the stupid actors are going to come out and make a dumb fuck statement, but probably they're just being told, shut your fucking mouth right now. We'll just let everything run and we'll see how it goes after this. We can just come back and try to salvage or salvage all this nonsense. But that's my prognostication. Okay. At the end of this stuff, I don't think we're going to, the, the user score through traditional means is not long for this world. Your input is not required. Merely your eyeballs watching the screen. Just consume, watch product consume product to get excited for next product and we'll be the ones we'll be the ones to curate to you what is good and what is not good and just as a little bit extra and kind of seeing this happening in the politics world right now i broke down uh, a little bit of joe biden's stupid 20 some odd minute speech from last night where he just basically castigated half the country and said that you know, you're not americans you're basically insurrectionists we don't like you at all and then just like what's happening right now no 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 the show isn't as bad as everybody thinks it is it's actually gonna be pretty good that's some of the arguments that we're going to be hearing towards you know the beginning of next week okay before the next Next episode comes out and even if it's just mediocre or like a four okay see it's not as bad it's just the incels that are bombing everything it's like yeah okay cool i we've seen this cycle happen multiple multiple times but not at such a high level joe biden the president okay is doing this shit right now in our fucking faces and he thinks that he's too that we're too stupid to fucking notice i don't consider any trump supporter a threat to the country 
even though last night you were just denigrating all of the mega Republicans that are out there. I don't consider any Trump supporter a threat to the country. Um, but yeah, let's just grab a direct quote right here. Donald Trump and the mega Republicans represent extremism that threatens the very founder or foundations of our republic. Okay. He said to great applause from the 12 people that were in the audience right now. And again, I use the picture, okay, the some variation of the one that's making the rounds right now. Okay, they kind of they kind of crop off the blue that's on the side there. I didn't notice that because mostly it was just kind of a tight shot on the speech last night. It was just the podium, the red background, the clenched fist, very very reiki, if you ask me. Very very poor idea. In fact, it kind of looked a little bit like this and we don't actually need to play any of this stuff. I just want you to take a look at what is going on in the background, okay? Especially just take a look at some of the red. It starts off very, very, very blood red, and then as soon as Joe just decides to continue to mutter and he starts denigrating people, and oh fuck, did you guys see that in real time? In real goddamn time? Okay, as you can see, okay, it's, uh, it's not quite so blood red anymore now. Uh, okay, what the hell happened? And normally, I don't think that it's fuchsia on the flag, but I could be completely wrong about that. But let's just go right back to the beginning. Oh, oh, there's like a marked difference from there uh, to there. Oh, oh, they're just gaslighting you in real time in politics, in life, and in media. With all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.